the state television company Western Armenia represent the most important news for today. Good day. Today's broadcast. A session of the National Assembly of Western Armenia. The remains of Misak Manushan and his wife Marina Manushan were buried in the pantheon of the famous figures of France. Lincoln still believes that peace is near. Propaganda has taken Baku to unconscious madness. The Armenians reach history in the Netherlands and Belgium. We and our natives, hide and net. One of the types of medieval Armenian folk, calligraphy. First set of findings were discovered in Ohanavan. On February 21, in the evening, on the online platform, the 10th session of the first convocation of the National Assembly of Western Armenia was held. Armenak Abrahamian, the first president of the Republic of Western Armenia, was present at the ceremony which was taking place in France. Then the chairperson of the National Assembly presented the amendments and additions to the National Assembly on internal regulations on the third and the fourth stages of the formation of the National Assembly government. The Speaker of the National Assembly reminded the members of the Western Armenia government and deputies about the importance of having passports and parliamentary mandates of the Republic of Western Armenia. During the session, a number of issues on security and internal regulatory issues were discussed. Summarizing the session, the chairperson of the National Assembly urged to write and sign the confidentially rules and the text of the oath. The corpses of Misak Manushan and his wife, Marina Manushan, were buried in the pantheon of the famous figures of France. The burial ceremony of Armenian hero of the French resistance movement, Misak Manushan, and his wife, Melina Manushan, took place in France pantheon of the immortals in which the president of France, Macron, attended to. French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal, former French President François Hollande, members of legislative bodies of Western Armenia and French government, public and political figures were also present at the event. Emmanuel Macron made a speech during the ceremony. In his speech, French president mentioned that Misak Manushan was free when he was walking along the street and passed by this pantheon, and he imagined the picture of his beloved Armenia. Manushan called himself a tiger full of range when he was arrested, but Medine was always with him in all the abysses and supported him. His final and permanent choice was freedom. He was always being a drunk and soldier of freedom, said Macron, adding that today France exists and is grateful to them. Misak and the two, 23 others and all others who were related to this freedom eventually received honor, love and freedom for eternity, said the French president. Manushans are not only the first Armenians to be buried in French pantheon of immortals, but also the first foreigners who are included in the pantheon of the immortals. As Rafi Semarjan wrote on his Facebook page, Misak and Melina Manushan are entering the temple of the immortals. 81 French personalities are buried in the pantheon. Misak Manushan will be the first foreigner to enter the pantheon, and Melina, his wife, will be the seven women whose corpses are in the pantheon. To this day, there are 83 immortals along with Voltaire, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Victor Hugo, Alexander Dumas. Blinken still believes that peace is near. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken believes that peace between Yerevan and Baku is close, and he called on the leaders of the two countries during the Munich Security Conference to resolve some of the remaining issues. This was stated by Matthew Miller, the spokesperson of the U.S. State Department. He still believes that peace is close, and he discussed it directly with the leaders of those two countries and encouraged them to work together to bridge the few remaining issues. And we will continue to encourage those countries to reach a peace agreement, Miller said, during a press conference. He also referred to the meeting of the leaders of Yerevan and Baku within the framework of the Munich conference. I know that the two leaders had a meeting in the Munich, and we will continue to offer the help and support of the United States to reach an agreement, said spokesperson of the State Department. The meeting of the Prime Minister of Armenia and the President of Azerbaijan took place within the framework of the Munich Security Conference with the mediation of German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. After the meeting, Pashinyan noted that the parties remain faithful to the agreements reached in Prague and Brussels. In the near future, a meeting of the foreign ministers of two countries is planned, and then a meeting of the commissions on border demarcation issues. Propaganda has taken Baku to unconscious madness. The German Sherwan Nahijevan Pan Armenian Union strongly condemns the neo nationalist anti Armenian attitude that has prevailed in Azerbaijan for decades. The Union referred to the murder of 
Gurgen Markarian, Armenian officer. It is said in the announcement that within the framework of the NATO training course, Partnership for Peace in 2004 on February 19, an Armenian officer, Gurgen Markarian, was brutally killed by Azerbaijan, Ramil Safarov in Budapest. Safarov, a bright representative of Azerbaijan extremists, hit Armenian officer 60 times with an axe while he was sleeping, and during the trial did not even repent for the crime he committed. However, such inhuman practices are only one side of the problem. Sentenced to life prison by a Hungarian court, Safarov was extradited to Azerbaijan only eight years later to serve the remainder of his sentence there. While soon after his arrival in Azerbaijan, Safarov was made a hero at the state level, receiving the highest honors. This is a clear evidence of the level of anti-Armenian attitude and ethnic hatred towards the Armenian nation in Azerbaijan before 2004. The propaganda of hatred has driven Azerbaijan to unconscious madness, during several million people into a mess ready for anti-humanist ideas and their practice applications at any moment which civilizational development has simply bypassed. The result of such a policy were not long in coming, only a state suffering from such racism could subject more than 100,000 people to a 10 month siege, of which about 340,000 were children, only state built on such foundation could resort to military actions against Armenians in a humanitarian disaster. Targeting civilian infrastructure, only such a state could carry out ethnic cleansing in a few days, depopulating the entire Nagorno Karabakh. All this will not seem strange at all if we remember that these actions were led by such a bright representative of the dictatorship of the East as Ilham Aliyev, who has been in his third decade of office, who considers the war his political mission, who considers Davos those whom months ago gave promises of peaceful integration. The Armenian community in Amsterdam was small at first, but about 800 Armenian names appear in the notarial deeds of the city's municipality. The community reached its demographic peak in 16. 68, when 66 Armenian clans can be counted. Wealthy Armenians initiated Amsterdam's elite by ordering gold and silver birth and marriage medals with Armenian inscriptions of births and marriages. The Armenian Church of Amsterdam, the first Armenian priest was invited to Amsterdam to conduct religious ceremonies in private homes in 1665. The notarial record, which dates back to 1703, refers to the hidden Armenian church in Konigsvar. On January 14, 714, the authorities gave Armenians permission to build an official church building visible from the street. In May 1714, 40 Armenian merchants financed the conversion of two warehouses on Kronbumslo waterfront in the center of Amsterdam into an Armenian church. In 1749, the outer entrance was de decorated with a monumental stone and an Armenian text, which was privately financed by the Armenian priest, Johannes de Minas. After serving its purpose for uh, about a century and a half, this building was closed due to the dwindling of its congregations. In 1874, by order of the Catholicos of Echmiadzin, the building was sold for 10,000 florins. After that the Catholic Press School for Girls operated in the building for more than a century. After the Second World War, the Armenian community of Amsterdam began to grow and the Armenians bought the building back in 1989 and today it is still functions as an Armenian church in the center of Amsterdam. We and our Heidener, Heidener, which are one of the types of medieval Armenian folk calligraphy. Natives, one of the types of medieval Armenian folk calligraphy, it consists of four lines of 15 syllables and is the same right. Sometimes the lines are divided into eight lines. The usual subject of natives are love, joy, hospitality, peace, etc. The natives left a great mark on Armenian poetic art. Armenian medieval poets wrote in their likeness and names, the most notable of whom in Nahapet Kuchak. However, in some manuscripts of the 15th and 17th centuries, Hovannes Yerzengadzi is mentioned as the author of the most of the sojourn and thought dis disciplined natives, and the love poems are found without an author's name. But in 1882, some authors and literary experts recognized Nahabek Kuchak as the author of the poems. Haydens are not Kuchak songs, they are Gusan folk songs. The natives are values endowed with high artistic qualities. Hyrians are the most wonderful treasures of Armenian lyric poetry, said Valery Brusov. 
Archaeologists are already working with the first group of discoveries from the early medieval rock hewn structure discovered in Ohanava Noria. 65 archaeological objects, mostly alive lamps of the 14th and 15th century, were first handed over to them, were numbered and accounted and then transferred to the museum object restoration laboratory. According to the source, the process of cleansing, cleaning the newly discovered treasure is currently being carried out. This was all for today. Goodbye. Oh